thank you Professor T.E. for this informal tutorial about literature. I am really excited about it. Oh, no problem. I always enjoy confusing my young eager students. So, in your opinion, what is literature? Well, that is the question, and important one too. Until we know what literature is, we cannot really posit a plausible literary theory. I mean, it would be like trying to explain the importance of aspirin without having experienced a headache. Well, literature has been defined in many ways. For example, some scholars define it as imaginative writing, or as writing, that is not true. This implies that only fiction can be true literature. Well, that sounds interesting, but I have read some pretty unimaginative works of imaginative fiction. Yes, yes. Also if you look at what we call literature diachronically, this definition does not hold. Sorry for the interruption, professor. What intarnation is diachronic? One of my crazy Pakistani professors uses it all the time. Diachronic is a term describing a mode of analysis that undertakes to construct the historical evolution of a system of thought or language. The synchronic, by contrast, undertakes to describe the system as an existing whole without respect to its history. Structural linguistics rejects the diachronic assumptions of classical philology, which studies linguistic change over a long period of time, and embraces the synchronic assumptions of Saussurean linguistics, which studies language as a functioning system existing in the here and now. Well, that has confused me more, but coming back to our question at hand, why does defining literature as fiction not hold? Well, if you take a cursory look at 17th century English literature you will find a diverse array of authors grouped together. Shakespeare, Webster, Marvel, Milton, Brown, Sir Thomas More, Bacon, and even Hobbes. Not all of these writers wrote imaginative unrealistic works. This implies that literature does not always has to be a work of fiction. So what is it then? Perhaps, we need to look at it from a different perspective. For example, in terms of not what literature is, but what kind of language it employs. The Russian formalists had such a formal view of literature. Wait. Russian formalists? I thought all Russians were communists whose legacy has now been passed on to President Obama and other socialist liberal fascists. Sorry, sometimes my tea party sensitive tea suddenly explode. Oh, no problem at all. I like tea myself, with peach scones by the way. So, who are Russian formalists? Well, according to the precepts of Russian formalism, content is the motivation of form, and the literary work is an assemblage of devices which function within a total textual system. Literariness emerges when these devices, normally perceived by the reader, to be familiar and conventional, are foregrounded, brought into an unaccustomed prominence such, that the effect upon the reader, is one of estrangement or defamiliarization. Literature, by bearing the device, de-automatizes one's perceptions, its language composing a deliberate set of deviations from the norms of ordinary language. In its hybridization, its heterogeneous mixture of devices, conventions, forms, and techniques, literature, in the words of Roman Jacobson, is organized violence committed on ordinary speech. That is pretty freaky. But I think I understood a bit. What you mean, is that for the Russian formalists, literature is literature, because it says things in unfamiliar ways thus making it hard for the reader to simply breeze through a literary text. Yes, precisely. But furthermore, such an experience is supposed to stop the reader in her tracks, and then force her to reflect about the world. In this sense, all works that use a specialized language and vocabulary can be categorized as literature. So, this means anything that sounds unfamiliar and hard to read can be literature? Yes, and no. The unfamiliar language alone does not qualify something as literature. After all, a technical manual can be quite taxing, and hard to read. So, literature is more than just some specific use of language. So, can you give me a definite answer as I have to leave soon, to join a pro-corporation rally? Not today, dear. But maybe in our next meeting we will continue this conversation. Okay, till then. So long professor and thank you.